Welcome everyone. Our paper is entitled Explanation Guided Diagnosis of Machine Learning Evasion Attacks. The authors of the paper are myself. My name is Abdurrahman Amish and my advisor, Professor Burhano Ichiti. Adversarial machine learning has been extensively studied in the recent years and research have shown that even minor input perturbations can lead to successful machine learning evasion attacks. If we take this example, this giant panda can be misclassified as black bear if an adversary adds studied noise to the input image. Such observations has raised questions of security and trustworthiness of machine learning models, especially in sensitive domains such as self-driving cars. The same vulnerability is also observed in machine learning malware detectors. More precisely, prior works have shown that if we add bytes or code to a malicious file, it can lead to misclassify it as a benign file. Based on related works, the effectiveness of feature perturbation-based machine learning evasion attacks is typically assessed by the aggregate evasion accuracy. Such high-level assessment lacks deeper insights about its performance on the level of each feature manipulation. More precisely, the added noise to each feature can either produce an evasive perturbation that can lead to misclassification, which is represented in green here, or it can be a non-evasive perturbation that might stand against the adversary's goal. Therefore, a feature-level perturbation assessment is required to obtain deeper insights about the effectiveness of the perturbation strategy. Such diagnosis can also lead to deeper understanding of adversarial input perturbation attacks, which could enable future effort towards robustness. In other words, the main motivation is to separate single feature perturbations that are linked to the effective evasion from the ones that do not play a role in the evasion goal. For this purpose, we employ machine learning explanation methods. In this work, we harness machine learning explanation methods to investigate in the effectiveness of each single feature perturbation. This shown example demonstrates the utility of such methods in this context. If we consider a handwritten digits classifier that is represented by if b here, it correctly predicts the label of an input image. A machine learning explainer such as Lime, Shap, or Lemna reveals the feature direction of each pixel. Following this example, pink pixels, which are directed to the true label 9, explains the correct prediction of the classifier. These pixels are the features that are behind predicting the correct label of the input sample. Therefore, they are called positive features. While the blue pixels are called negative features and the white pixels are neutral to the classification decision. Our diagnoses are guided by the post evasion feature directions returned by a machine learning explainer. So we assess the effectiveness of a single feature perturbation by comparing its direction with respect to the desired label fixed by the adversary. Therefore, we employ machine learning explainers on the adversary's input in order to detect the direction of each perturbed feature. Using the post-evasion direction of each perturbed feature of the evasive adversarial sample, we conduct a correlation analysis by defining the suit of metrics. The first metric computes the feature-level perturbation precision of each sample. It is defined as the average of two terms that captures the rate of two different types of evasive perturbations or what we also call positive perturbations. The first type of evasive perturbations is the ones that are directed to any class YI other than the true label Y true. And the second type captures the ones that are not directed to the true label Y true. 
as both types are overlapping, we take the average between both rates. The non-evasive perturbations are the ones that are directed to the true label. The rate of such perturbations is captured in the per sample perturbation error metric. And we also call such perturbations that obviously stand against causing any misclassification negative perturbations. For both metrics, the value lies between 0 and 1. And in order to have a data set level assessment, we compute the rate of samples that have high positive perturbations comparing to the negative perturbations. Such adversarial samples are highly correlated to the evasion result, since most of its perturbations are directed to misclassification. Formally, the high correlation rate captures the number of perturbed samples that have a perturbation precision closer to one. And finally, we compute the average perturbation error over all perturbed samples in order to compute the number of negative perturbations across all samples. We experiment the proposed explanation guided correlation analysis on three different systems and we use a total of eight different machine learning models. First, we use Cuckoo Trace, which is a custom dataset of Windows executables that is composed of equal, that is equally composed of malicious and benign files. And we extract their dynamic features by executing and analyzing their runtime behavior using Cuckoo Sandbox. We also use a complementary dataset called Ember, which is a benchmark system for malware detection built by collecting static features of 1 million Windows executables. Finally, we experiment our approach on a convolutional neural network as a target model trained on MNIST dataset, which is also a benchmark for multi-label image classification. As explained before, our goal is to obtain deeper insights that describe the link between the post-perturbation misclassification and each feature perturbation. Therefore, we adopt in our experiments prior perturbation methods that can reach a high evasion rate. Moving to the results, the table shows the results for the two metrics, the high correlation rate and the average perturbation error or each model trained on different data set. The high correlation rate result suggests that for most studied models, more than half of adversarial samples are produced using feature perturbations that have a weak correlation with the evasion result. These findings propose that although a perturbed sample can confuse a machine learning model to misclassify its true label, the correlation between each single feature perturbation and the misclassification is not always guaranteed. The average perturbation error results for most models are unacceptably high, which reflects that a feature perturbation strategy that on one hand can lead to a misclassification on the sample level, on another hand, it might also lead to a considerable number of negative perturbations on the feature level. It is also noteworthy that, unlike other systems, feature perturbations performed on Ember dataset are highly correlated with the evasion result, with a low rate of negative perturbations. Such variation in the outcome of the correlation analysis between Cuckoo Trace and Ember might indicate about the sensitivity of different malware feature types towards perturbations. The figure represents the distribution of the perturbation precision of each adversarial input, which is represented by its index and across all models trained on Cuckoo Trace. Here we focus on the evasive samples that are misclassified by the machine learning model. They are presented in purple. For all five models, we observe a high number of purple points that are below the red line. 
which means more than half of the perturbed features in each of these samples are not correlated with the misclassification result. The previously reported results indicate that perturbations at the feature level might not always be in line with the adversary's goal. In order to improve its perturbation strategy, an adversary can explore in the feature directions that led to the correct classification. Then he can use his perturbation method only on features that are originally causing the correct classification, which are all the pink pixels in this case. The outcome would be not only less negative perturbations, but also a lower perturbation size in general. To get insights about to what extent this idea of a case study can improve the correlation results, we experimented using the same previous setup. Results show that an explanation-guided attack not only can lead to more correlated perturbations and less negative perturbations as indicated by the high correlation rate and the average perturbation error results, but also it can improve the aggregate evasion accuracy for all studied models, as it looks like the post-evasion accuracy can, is decreasing after employing explanation-guided feature selection before perturbations. However, we notice that this approach is still making perturbation errors. Based on prior works that have evaluated machine learning explanation methods, we believe that this observation can be explained by the limitations of the currently introduced machine learning explanation methods in terms of their accuracy and stability between different trends. In summation, this work reveals the following conclusions. First, aggregate evasion rate is not enough to evaluate the effectiveness of machine learning evasion strategy. Therefore, we have shown that deeper diagnoses are mandatory to offer high fidelity insights about the effectiveness of the evasion strategy at the feature level. Furthermore, although a perturbed input might confuse a classifier to mispredict its label, the performed feature perturbations are not necessarily all correlated to the attack. In addition to that, Future works on evasion attacks can be guided to perturb only necessary features using the pre-perturbation feature directions. And this is in line with the results of the case study. Also, feature sensitivity to perturbations vary across models, architectures, data sets, and also between different feature types. And finally, we believe that such results might enable future effort for more robust machine learning systems. Finally, we thank you for giving interest in this work and we are happy to receive your current questions. You can also reach out to us via email for further discussions after the conference.